congratulations. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello from the Lovett School in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Meredith Cole, Lovett's head of school. We are thrilled to connect with the International Space Station along with our very own Lovett alum, Shane Kimbrough, class of 85. Colonel Kimbrough, thank you so much for your service to Lovett and to the space program. There are a number of Lovett Lions who are really excited to speak with you today. So here's our first question. Hi, my name is Riley Tatum and I am in the 10th grade at the Lovett School. And thank you for taking your time above the Carmen line to speak to us. So as someone who is interested in a career in astronautics, what is your favorite part of being an astronaut? For example, the studying, training, the launch, the missions, the camaraderie, or maybe the food brought from each country. Well, thanks for the question. Those are all really great things that I do love about being an astronaut. But probably my favorite thing is just being able to represent my country, and not even that, but all of humanity when we're up here in space. Hi, my name is Nora, and I am in the second grade at the Lovett School. If you could travel to another planet, which one would you choose and why? Ah, wow. So I think uh, I think Saturn. I've always been kind of fascinated with Saturn and the rings around it, so I think I want to go to a planet like that just to check it out. Hi, my name is Jackson, and I am in the sixth grade at the Lovett School. What does it feel like when you take off in a rocket ship? It is the most amazing feeling, and I hope you all get a chance to, to experience it one of these days. Uh, when we're sitting on the launch pad, you're there for a couple hours getting ready to go. You're typically on your back, strapped in your seats really tight. But when those engines light, um, you feel the incredible power underneath you um, that's about to really explode and then send you off the planet. So it's really cool to have that much thrust and that much energy underneath you and feel those engines when they light up and then they're getting ready to send you off somewhere really, really fast. It takes about eight and a half to nine minutes to get to space on those incredible engines. So it's a really quick ride from zero miles per hour to 17,500 miles per hour in about eight and a half minutes. Hi, my name is Stuart and I'm in the 12th grade at the Levitt School. Now that we've gotten an image of a black hole, what used to be purely hypothetical now has photo evidence. What is your view on primordial black holes? Do you think we will ever get confirmation of their existence? And do you think that they are possibly what dark matter is made up of? Wow, that's a tough one. I, that's, uh, you know, black holes are something that I haven't done any research in, so I, I really can't answer that question uh, with any, you know, without you know lying or something. So I want to be truthful and just say, you know, I don't know a whole lot about it. I do know that NASA and the European Space Agency are getting ready to launch a spacecraft next year in 2022 that's going to go check this out. And maybe we'll find, you know, find out more about this dark, this mysterious dark matter and even dark energy down the road. Hello, my name is Warren Edwards, and uh, I'm a Breakthrough Atlanta student at the Ron Clark Academy. And I just wanted to know, how do you feel about other companies uh, going to space besides NASA? I think it's fantastic. Uh, as you're probably aware, these last few years with all these other private companies starting to to get in the space business, it's really been great. I mean, it's in the news a lot more. There are a lot of a lot more people are excited about it. And so, for me and for NASA, I think in general, we're very excited to get more people involved. Now, we're on the International Space Station here. This isn't our final destination. Uh, we want to go further, right? We want to go further out. But we think private companies can maybe take over something in low Earth orbit like the space station. So we're really looking forward to working with private companies and international companies and international countries like we've already been doing for many years with the space station. Hi, my name is Christopher and I am in the fourth grade at the Lovett School. What do you think might be a fun Olympic sport astronauts could do from space? 
Hey, Christopher, that's a great question. We actually had our own Space Olympics here just a few weeks ago, um, kind of to coincide with the Olympics in Tokyo. And we had some pretty fun activities up here that we did. I think uh, the funniest ones that we did up here were um, synchronized floating, uh, which kind of is equivalent to synchronized swimming. And then we had gymnastics. We had some uh, no handball. And we had, so what else did we have? We had some shooting games and long jumps. So those are really fun to do in microgravity. Hi, my name is Jalen, and I am in the seventh grade at the Levitt School. With everything that is going on now in the world, such as a pandemic, how do you guys take precautions to stay healthy? Yeah, it's an excellent question. We, we try to not bring anything with us. That's the bottom line. So about three weeks, two to three weeks before we launch into space, we go into a pretty hard quarantine um, that most people are familiar with that word now, but even before um, COVID hit, uh, we, were, we would always do this two to three week quarantine prior to launching. And that's just to get, get ourselves away from the general public and so we don't get any bugs and take anything up here to the space station with us because we do live in a very small confined area. And so if somebody's going to get sick, then everybody's going to get sick and we don't want that to happen. So that's proven to be a, a, a really good technique. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, nobody's gotten sick on any of my missions um, due to this quarantine program that we're in now. So uh, hopefully that'll continue. Hello, my name is Tyler. I'm in the seventh grade at the Lovett School. What do you do in your free time on the space station? There are several things we can do with our free time. You, generally, about half the weekends are free, so we do have some time to do that. Sometimes in the evenings, we have some free time as well. Uh, a lot of us get into taking photos, and you may have seen some of those on social media. Uh, we have a really great platform here, the International Space Station, to take some amazing pictures of planet Earth. And we all get, uh, that kind of becomes our hobby up here, so that's something that we get to do. We also can, uh, um, some of my colleagues like to read books or watch TV shows or watch movies. Um, I'm a big sports fan, so I like to watch sports. So on the weekends, we'll, we'll get a chance to watch some of the games that are going on down on planet Earth. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Paez, and I am the Lower School Academic Technology Specialist at the Lovett School. In the engine maker space, we're constantly using creativity and resourcefulness to solve problems. I'm curious what the process is like for space crew to solve problems on board the space station. Yeah, we, you know, I think I think of us as a bunch of problem solvers in general. And uh, when things come up on the space station, if it's a real emergency, that I'll start with that. Um, we have some memorized responses that we get trained on before we fly, and then we get refreshed on while we're up here in space, so we don't forget. But those, then the crew just kind of takes over. There's a kind of a chain of command up here amongst the crew with a commander and other people doing different responsibilities, and we just just go into action and execute like we were trained. Now, if it's something on a day-to-day -day basis where maybe a piece of hardware is not working or one of our science experiments isn't working, then we'll chat with all the teams on the ground, all the mission control centers around the world that help us out and the scientists and researchers that have their equipment and their products up here. We get to chat with them as well and they can help us. We don't have to do this on our own. We got a huge team on the ground that will help us problem solving and try to figure out what's going on so that we can get the researchers their data that, they are, that they're hoping to get by being in microgravity. Hi, my name is Alexander, and I am in the first grade at the Lovett School. How do you put shampoo in your hair? Well, it is interesting to, to do anything like that. Uh, shampoo, you put it in your hair kind of the same way, but you got to be careful to actually kind of stick the, the bottle onto your hair because if you just squirt it out, it's going to go everywhere. So uh, there's this thing called surface tension where if you just put it onto your head and squeeze the bottle, it'll stay on your hair. And then you kind of scrub it out, but then you got to do the same thing with water. So we have a little a water bag and, a, and something that looks like this, and you put the little straw under your head and squeeze it, and then the water comes out. And then you can get a towel and then just uh, rinse all the shampoo and the water out together in the towel. My name is Alex Brown. I am a Breakthrough Atlanta student, and I attend Miller's Military Academy. I aspire to become a pilot, and my question is, what made you go to space knowing all the risks? 
Well, um, I've always wanted to go to space since I was a little kid. Uh, the, the astronauts that were landing on the moon back in the late 60s and early 70s are what inspired me to want to do it. Uh, I had a, the path that I took to get here was through the military, so I learned how to take some risks, to manage risk, um, even being a leader, manage risk for all of my troops as well. Uh, and here at NASA, we certainly do take some risks, but I think the risks are worth what we're getting. The benefits that we're getting out of space travel and space flight to all of humanity are well worth the risk in my mind. Hi, my name is Kira, and I'm in the 12th grade at the Lovett School. What has been your favorite experiment to perform on the International Space Station, and how did working in zero Gs affect its outcome? Let's see, I've had a couple of favorite ones on this mission. One is called Plant Habitat 4, where I'm getting to grow some chili peppers up here, which is pretty cool. On my last mission, I got to grow lettuce, and that was really cool as well. We got to harvest the lettuce a couple times and actually eat it. Uh, these chili peppers are kind of the most complex thing we've tried to grow in space, and they take about four months to um, get ready to eat. So we're hoping they're gonna be ready by, by late October, early November, before we head out of here. A uh, second one that, I, that a bunch of us are working on right now is called ring shear drop. And so it's looking at the proteins uh, that uh, come from neurodegenerative uh, diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Uh, and we have a unique environment up here in space where we can actually simulate um, those protein cells in a, in a human body. And we can do it better than they can on the ground just due to the microgravity environment. So that's pretty cool to be able to, to take part in something um, as big as that that can hopefully help people back on Earth once we figure out what's going on. Hi, my name is Alicia, and I am in the fifth grade at the Lovett School. I would like your thoughts on space travel becoming more commercial and more available to people in the future. Well, again, I think it's very, it's really fantastic. Uh, we're actually starting a new era, not we NASA, but we as humanity are starting a new era in space travel. I don't know if you know, but here in just a couple of weeks, uh, SpaceX is going to launch the first private crew. Uh, they're going to go up into space for a couple of days. They're not coming here to visit us at the space station, but they're going to be in space for a couple of days. That's never happened before, so that's that's going to be amazing. Uh, in early next year, there's going to be a private crew that comes to the International Space Station for a little over a week. And so this is all new. It's an all new beginning, but hopefully, you know, 10, 20 years from now, this will be very routine, and maybe you can get a chance to come to space one of these days. Hi, my name is Sophie, and I am in the third grade at the Levitt School. How many satellites are currently in space, and how do you prevent them from colliding into each other? So there are thousands of satellites in space. I don't know the exact number, and it's not something that we uh, at the Johnson Space Center and the human spaceflight business deal a lot with, but we have other, other people that do. You know, of course, NASA and other telecommunications companies and the military, they have a lot of satellites up there, and they're the ones that really track those things and make sure that they're not running into each other like you asked. Now, that's, that can be tough with thousands of things up there, for us, the good news is they're way above us um, in altitude. We're about 250 miles above the Earth, generally, and those satellites are usually thousands of miles above us. So um, we don't have a chance, generally, in running into them unless they happen to be deorbiting, then we have to maybe worry about them. But uh, at, at our low Earth orbit, uh, we're pretty safe from the satellites. Hi, my name is Joey Boveri, and I'm a 12th grader at the Lovett School. If you had the ability to make a modification to the International Space Station, what would it be and why? Well, I think I'd make some more windows up here. We have a couple of really incredible places to, to look out and see planet Earth and actually out into deep space. And uh, I would love to have a few more of those and maybe some more big lens cameras that we can take a lot more pictures of, especially with more crew members that we're getting up here. Hi, my name is Edie and I'm in eighth grade at the Lovett School. What are some things or challenges that not many people know about living in space? Well, we have several things. Um, one, we don't have showers, and so uh, we do have to clean ourselves off every day, especially after working out a couple hours a day like we do. Uh, and so that's a challenge, just having a you know a way to, to uh, that we have to overcome, but we have to be clean. You don't want to be around you know your crewmates if they're not they're not clean. So uh, that's something we have to take care of. We don't have sinks up here to like wash our hands or to, um, you know, when you're brushing your teeth on, on earth, what do you do? You spit it into the sink. Well, we don't have a sink. So you have to swallow your toothpaste um, and everything in your mouth. So that's something that's kind of just a unique challenge of being in space. 
Hi, my name is Morgan, and I'm in the 12th grade at the Lovett School. The Nauka Multipurpose Laboratory module was just recently added to the International Space Station. What specific experiments did you plan to conduct in that space? Yeah, we welcomed the uh, the Nauka module here just, I don't know, three, three weeks ago now, I guess. It was really cool. It's really incredible to look out our, one of our windows and see it and uh, and actually go get in it as well. Now, I won't be doing any, any experiments in there personally. Um, as you may know, that's a Russian module, so the Russian cosmonauts will mainly be doing the experiments in there. I think down the road um, we will have collaborative um, research projects with them in there, but at least for the next few months while we're here before we come home, we won't have any research projects with them. It's also going to serve as an airlock for them, so they're going to start doing their spacewalks out of there once they get everything hooked up. So it's a really nice, really big module. Um, it's been great going over there and checking it out every now and then. They have a really nice window that you can look out and, and see our part of the space station as well as planet Earth. Hi, my name is Reagan, and I'm in the Love of School, and I am in first grade. And how do you not float out of your bed while you're sleeping in the space station? Excellent question. So we, our little sleep stations, um, I'll call them little cubicles. They're kind of a small closet size. Um, I would say telephone booth, but you probably don't know what that means. Uh, but they're really kind of a small compartment. And in that compartment, you need to have a sleeping bag to sleep in, and you need to attach it to one of the walls. Otherwise, you'll just kind of bounce around in that compartment, and that wouldn't be very good for your sleep. So we make sure we attach our sleeping bag to a wall, and then you just float into your sleeping bag and zip it up and then you're kind of locked in there and you'll get a good night's sleep in general. Hi, my name's Ethan Greenberg. I teach physics, astronomy, and engineering in the upper school. What kind of training do you have before you get to the International Space Station in order to be able to implement others' research plans and data collection? Yeah, thanks for the question. We. You know, we go all around the world to train um, in Europe, in Russia, uh, in Japan, and in the United States mainly. And uh, in all those centers, when they train us, they train us on a lot of their experiments and different equipment that we're going to work with. So we do get a nice foundation. I will say we don't. There's not enough time to train us on every experiment we're going to conduct up here. So we kind of, I would say, we have to be trained generally, uh, not specifically. So. We, we know how certain you know boxes work, how certain machines work, and those kind of things, and we can follow a procedure. We can listen to their researcher or the scientist on the, horn, on the horn or on the phone telling us what to do, and we can understand that. And some of that just comes with practice and more experience. So uh, we learn. Uh, we never stop learning as astronauts, and that's another. Um, I'm not a scientist, so when I'm doing all these science experiments, I really make sure I'm listening to the experts because I do not want to mess up their data. So a lot of our training, like I said, is more generally based um, versus the specific experiment because we don't really know what's going to be up here. It's all based on the launch schedule of those items as well as our launch schedule. Hi, my name is Carter and I'm in the 12th grade at Lovett. How can high school students get involved in NASA and spaceflight and how did you begin your journey to become an astronaut? Yeah, there's several ways high school students can get involved. Um, one of the ones that comes to mind right off the bat is a program called Hunch. And Hunch uh, allows high school students to actually design and build hardware for us. Uh, there's a lot of items that we use up here on a daily basis that are Hunch-based. Uh, I know a lot of the schools in Texas and around Houston are very involved in this, but it's it's a nationwide thing where, where students and groups can get involved to build things and design things for the space station for the astronauts to use. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Genes in Space is another program where you can look at some DNA um, testing and get us some samples up here based on something that you want to look at um, specifically, and then we can test the DNA up here in space, so another cool thing. Uh, I think the second question you had was what made me want to be an astronaut, I think, or something like that. Is that right? Um, and if so, you know, I've always wanted to do it my whole life, uh, never was sure I was going to be it, of course. Uh, I worked really hard. Um, throughout my schooling at Lovett. Um, I had a great foundation there and then took that to West Point and then went to serve in the military and the Army as an Apache helicopter pilot and uh, truly honored to do that. And then I got a, you know, about mid-career in the Army, I got a chance to come to NASA to be an astronaut. So um, a real thrill for me. Hello, my name is Jessica Sant, Lovett's Chief Engagement Officer. I want to offer a special thank you to Colonel Kimbrough, who answered our students' questions today, and to NASA for making this exceptional experience possible. 
there's no doubt that you've inspired a new generation of space explorers. Thanks a bunch. It was great talking with everybody today. Station, this Go is Lions. Houston. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Thank you.